So, hi dear students, let us talk about the WHO surgery safety checklist and this is really very important. Why? Because majority of the times you must have heard that the patient went for a surgery of uh, right, uh, you can say side kidney and underwent a hernia repair or underwent an amputation. So, why these things happen? Because you don't confirm the identity and then there are post-surgery complications like where is the specimen? Yeah, where is the gauze? Oh, it's inside the abdomen. Oh, the instrument count is not matching. Oh, we have operated on a wrong patient. So, in order to reduce all these clutter, we have something which is known as surgical safety checklist and this is really very, very, very important. I am sharing the surgical safety checklist of my own hospital. So, what are the three important things? The first thing is you confirm the identity and confirm it with the patient also and cross check it with the patient. Then the next thing is you need to explain the anesthesia and you should yourself know that the type of anesthesia you are going to give to the patient, is the patient suitable for that? So, all these things are settled before you make the incision and before you give the incision and the first phase is known as sign in. This is very, very, very important. So, what is sign in? Sign is the, sign in is the first phase and that is before the induction of anesthesia, before you give anesthesia to the patient. What are the things that you see? You confirm the identity of the patient, you check whether the surgical site is marked or no. Like suppose you are going for a very coarse vein, you need to understand that radiologist has marked the territory of the vein or no. So, in different surgeries you need to have that, whether the surgical site is marked or no, whether the patient itself knows about the surgery that he is undergoing. The next is you have to check the anesthesia machine and everything, all the meters, all the gas flows, you can say regulators, are they working or no? Then you need to check, is there any allergy, specific allergy to the patient? Do you need to check whether the patient is having any denture or you can say loose tooth, all those things and you again have to assess about the possibility of a difficult airway and if it is there, you need to consult it with the surgeon also because there might be a need of conversion into a GA. So, this phase, before you start giving anesthesia and induce the patient to anesthesia, this phase is known as sign in. The next phase, before you give the incision, this phase is known as time out. This is very important. So, what is, what are the things that you have to decide? Before you give incision, you need to confirm the team. Surgeon introduces him and his team that, okay, you are going to be S2, you are going to be scrub, at scrubs. So, there should no, there should be no confusion. Then any critical step which can be encountered during the surgery, you need to discuss. Okay, like we have a patient where we think, okay, we have to go quick in, quick out or suppose you are dealing with pheochromocytoma, you know that I have to be very cautious when I go near the adrenals. So, any critical event that can be anticipated has to be discussed right now. If the patient requires blood, you need to check whether the blood has been, you can say, uh, secured for this patient or no. And the next very important point is confirm about the antibiotic. Pre-operative antibiotic profile access is really very, very, very important and should be given within 60 minutes. Some people say 60 minutes, some people say at the time of anesthesia, you give it, but before the incision. Because once you damage the first line of, you can say, uh, safety, you cannot. So, before the incision, yes, up to 60 minutes. Why 60 minute window is given? Because drug will also take some time to go to the peak level and that is why within 60 minutes. Is that clear or no? Before incision, before induction, at 60 minutes, this is the only exception to this is vancomycin because vancomycin can be given up to one, you can say 20 minutes prior to the incision because of a longer half-life. Next is, next is. The mop, gauze, instrument counts, have they been done or no? This is very, very important. And then one more thing is, like whenever you are doing on a case of GIT or whenever you are doing an orthopedic surgery, you need to display, you can say, the radiology. So, have the plates been fixed on the, you can say, x-ray console or no? This is very important. Now, the third phase, before you leave the OT room, this is known as time, uh, this is known as sign out. So, we have seen sign in, we have seen time out and then we have time sign out. This is very important. Now, when we talk about sign out, this is when the, you can say, the patient leaves the room. So, before that, you need to check any critical event that has happened has been, you can say, notified or no. 
any special advice that has to be given in you can say relation to patient care has been mentioned or no if the specimen has been delivered out has it been handed over to the patient's attendant or has it has to be notified in the you can say register and has it to be sent is it if it is to be sent for biopsy so this is what is known as sign out so there are three phases sign in time out and sign out and if you follow this you will definitely reduce the you can say chances of catastrophic events during the surgery